with a brotherhood whose affliction is temporal and whose mortality is a weight upon the soul. Now lies the baleful instruction, a page for the grimoire of our ascension, for to win a member of our own is stricken and falls. The rites of embalming. The body is to be taken into the cryptum renaissance. It shall firstly be said to be disrobed. The steady hands of the philanthropites and the godly fingers of the death tenders shall work to preserve the body against the natural decay of our mortality. Exsanguination in the holy basin will be achieved by the gentle fingers of the tenders, and no interference shall occur. This body's blood shall be its last gift, a testamental sacrifice of its new faith. The libation of holy oils, incense and beer shall adorn the body. The passages of Erectus and Nostrum shall be recited by the philanthropic priest. The body will be adorned by the god glimmer, its silver and gold glow being a peaceful repose and last preparation. The dust shall be spread by the hand, the cries of the philanthropite shall be its last mourning, for this act purifies the adorned body and the adored hands in divine light. When this is complete, the body is to be placed into a prepared casket, sealed in candle wax, and left in the cryptum in the event they cannot be reborn that day. The rites of rebirth. Take the body of the sleeper, and lift the casket upon the shoulders of six acolytes. Their bodies must be unmarred by the whippet or scourge, for they must not have been aggrieved or savaged before this. Carry the body to the foot of the mechanolium, pry the casket, and expose the sleeper to the dais. If the body glimmers, the time is nigh. The kin speaker, a clergy of youth and apprenticeship, shall say, Truly in weakness, we give up this day a sleeper we hold, for as it was promised, the sleep of death is well deserved. And the mechanolith, hallowed in its waking, will in a voice of saintly crackling vibrato shall speak. Indeed, another of your dead you shall give, and into the fold in two will it rise again, renewed in purpose. The kin speaker, in all humility, will ask, To what end shall their purpose be realized? To what end shall you undergo in your sanctified action? The machine, tender and powerful in its benevolence, an exertion of our master's will shall state. In their mortality, they have met the destination of all imperfect beings. So too, in their imperfections, they toiled with body and mind against nature under the shadow of our dominion. For their weaknesses, they will be remade, reborn, in the purified sight of us your betters. Or if they have no eyes, we shall bestow upon them sight. Or if they possess no limb, we shall ingrain a new, perfect, or task divine. Or if they lack a tongue to speak, we shall imbue them with the words of our almighty grace and truth, to speak of our holiness for a generation. Or if they died in sickness, as was foretold, they shall be born unfettered. The acrid wind and blighted earth will plague them no longer. Or if they died in toil as was commanded, they shall rise again stronger tenfold, above you all unequaled for the greatest works laid ahead. For if they died in battle, either foe or friend, then their broken body shall be used up to regain our strength and its fourth join the fold as a brother in arms. For if they lack the strength of heart or mind, the will of body or soul, we shall breathe into them a mold around them. 
Then how shall this vessel serve? How will its perfection be made manifest? To which the Mechanolith shall speak. This vessel we shall take unto our counterpart. It will live again as one of millions. It will labor and never tire. It will fall but never die. And it will walk across the accursed ground and never again feel pain. In this our perfection is made manifest. The body is to be placed upon the dais, and the Mechanolith will guide it to ascension. For three days and three nights, the kin speaker and the philanthropists must sing the hymn of rebirth. Three banded flutes must take the place of five banded flutes, and the melody must be pleasing for the first of night, discordant the second, and on the third night the choir and the instruments will become cacophony. When the body is reborn, it must be anointed with incense and oil. And when it is done, it must be led to the temple deaths to sleep uneasy till it is called. So saith the High Priest. Rites of Death, Verses of the Technot.